In this video traders, we are gonna look at the reverse iron condor trading strategy in options. Stay tuned. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. Okay, so you might have heard of the, of the iron condor. This is the reverse iron condor, kind of gives it away with the name, but it's basically looking for the opposite of what an iron condor would be. So what is the reverse, reverse iron condor? How do we construct it and why would we even use it? So the reverse iron condor is basically when we think something big is going to happen to the underlying. In this example, we're gonna stick with a stock, but it could be an ETF, could be an index, could be a commodity anything like that. We think that it's gonna move one way or the other. We're just not sure which way. So we're direction neutral, but we expect it to close or expire outside of a range that we define. And so we could construct this of reverse iron condor. Now, we could just buy a put and just buy a call, but we would have up a downside that's bit larger than what we want. So the reverse iron condor reduces the downside. It also reduces the upside potential slightly, and there is capped upside and capped downside. But it's kind of the thing with options, right, guys? You either give with one hand and you take away with the other. You've got to find that balance. And so let's look, look at an example. Let's look at a thesis and let's see how it would pay out and look at different scenarios to see why we'd use it and what we would actually get from different expiries. So Let's say we think the market's going to move out of a range uh, one way or another. I'm not sure which way. Uh, if we thought there's going to be massive upside, we'd just buy a call option, right? If we thought there's going to be massive downside, we'd probably just buy a put option. We think it's going to be one or the other. Now, we would construct that by buying a call and buying a put. And that's exactly the first part of this deal is we say, okay, uh, we think it's going to move uh, X, Y, Z, sorry, should I say, is trading at, currently trading at 45 bucks. We think it's going to, at expiry, it's going to be either below $40 or above $50. We think it's going to have a decent move. We don't know which way. So what do we do? Uh, we buy a $50 uh, call option and that would ensure that we're making money for every single cent or dollar that expires above $50. We just make the difference between the two. Don't forget, a call option is the right, but not the obligation to buy something at 50. And if it's currently trading at 60, that's got $10 in it. If it's currently trading at 100, it's got $50 worth of value. That's what we're looking for, looking for that expansion to the upside. But don't forget, we need the downside as well. This is where we buy the put option. We buy the put option. We buy a $40 put option because we're trying to bracket that range, 40 to 50, anything outside of it will make cash. And this allows, the put option allows us the right, but not the obligation to sell something at 40. So it's currently trading at 10. Whoopie doo, we've made 30 bucks on that deal. Now, the price we pay for these is $100. So that could be they're trading at $1 and we're buying one contract. Or assumption we're buying one contract here. What's the net outcome of this? So we buy one contract uh, and this costs us $100 for the put, $100 for the call. So you can see that our maximum downside, if we didn't do anything else, is still $200. When you're buying an option, the worst thing it could do is go to zero. And if you're buying that, then that's the worst you can. That's the most you can lose. So you can see the upside is pretty good here because if we suddenly went to a hundred dollars, then all of a sudden that's worth fifty dollars times by your one hundred shares. That's a pretty sizable sum. Even though you lose your hundred dollars here, you're making a lot. But you know what? We don't think it's going to go crazy like that. So we want to cap the downside a little bit. Let's say we want to halve that. We don't think 200 is right. We think it's gonna, we think it's gonna go above 55. We think, sorry, it's gonna go 50 or below 40, but I don't think it's gonna go massively. It's not gonna go to zero, it's not gonna go to a thousand. So we, we're prepared to kind of reduce the risk. And how can we how can we halve the risk, say? What we do is we start to sell some options contracts. When we sell them, we receive credit for them. So first of all, we decide where we're gonna put it. So we think the $35 mark is a good place to sell the put. So this is where we'd sell the put. Um, we think that that's pretty much as low as it will go, and we want to receive some credit for that. So we sell one $35 put for 50 cents, 100 shares, gives us $50 in our pocket. Same with the upside, we sell a $55 call, 
And again, that's costing us fifty dollars in, in total. We receive, or sorry, the cost of that is fifty dollars. But as we're selling it, we receive it. So that's great because we've spent two hundred, but we've received fifty back. So it's costing us a hundred dollars to take the trade. It's a hundred dollar debit to take this trade, and it's going to pay out for us in these scenarios. Let's have a look. So let's assume nothing happens. We're pretty wrong with the deal. Nothing really happens. The put. It's trading, we're tr currently trading at 45, so let's say this is the price of expiry. Let's put a dollar sign on there, price expiry. $45, what's the value of the put? The right to sell something at 35 is 45, nothing. The right to sell something at 40 is 45, worthless. Both the puts expire worthless. What about the calls? Well, the price is underneath both these calls, so again, both these expire worthless. We've received 50 for that, we've lost 100 for that. We've paid 100 for that, we've received 50 for that. So just like we paid at the total debit for the trade, we've lost $100 on that deal. And that's the same if it went to $50, right? Because the puts expire worthless, zero, zero. The $50 call, well, the right to buy something at 50 that's currently trading at 50 has got no value, so zero. And the $55 call obviously is higher than the expiry price. Again, it's got no value. So we've lost 100 bucks on that deal. All right, so let's have a look and see what happens if good things happen to us. Let's say it expires at $30. What's the, what's the 35 put gonna be worth at 30? Well, you're right, it's gonna have $5 worth of value times by $100, Unfortunately, we sold that one, so we've lost that $500. But that's okay because that was our kind of, we, we used that to make our downside less, so we're happy with that. The good stuff is this one. This is the one that's paying out the most for us because we bought this $40 put. Ding, well done. We get a brownie point for that. What's that worth? It's worth thousand dollars because ten dollars worth of in ten dollars worth in the option contract which we bought. We bought one of those hundred times ten. There we got a thousand dollars. Okay, so what about the calls? Well, as it's to the downside, both of these expire worthless, so we've lost the net on those. So what is the outcome of that? Well, we've made a thousand dollars. Great. We lost $500 because we had that protection that we were reducing the downside of risk in the total deal. So, okay, not so great. And we paid 100 for the total cost of the options. So we're making $400. That's pretty good. All right, so what happens on the upside? Exactly the same thing, just flipped. Because the puts are expiring worthless, zero, the right to sell something that's below the current price, that's no value. The $50 call, that's the good one that's paying out for us, that's worth 10 bucks, times by 100 shares, $1,000 dollars value on that but we lost five hundred dollars on selling this fifty five dollar call which has got five dollars worth of value uh, times by the hundred five hundred dollars so again thousand dollars minus the five hundred minus the hundred we paid for the whole lot don't forget because that's just the these numbers just the value of the options and take into account what we paid for it gives us four hundred dollars profit so you can see how that regardless of how high it goes it's always going to be that way because even if we go into really into high zone in actual fact you know, the call, this, this call is gonna be worth loads, loads more, but unfortunately it's gonna be offset by anything above 55 now, it's gonna be offset because you're gonna lose it on this leg. So what you make on this, you lose on this. So you can see that maybe you wouldn't want to have these cells, and you could see that ultimately if it really shot out of the range, you'd make a lot more money because this then would be unlimited if that was going up to 60, uh, sorry, if that was going up to 70, expiring at 70 or something, you'd be making 2,000 on that. Yeah, and, and, and you could see that that would be far more profitable to you. So the Iron Condor locks in the real precise thing that you want to achieve. It limits that downside, but you can see we halve the downsides. So the risk reward ratio suddenly becomes massively different. So you could take this trade more often and it still be a winning, uh, winning strategy. Ultimately, yes, you might get a jackpot move and you might miss out on that from time to time, but that's a small price you potentially pay. But you know, it's a commercial decision for you to make in your trading business. You can see that um, this kind of thing won't pay off as often. It's got a low, um, it's got a low probability of success, but the risk reward ratio is pretty decent. In this example, it's one to four. So when it does pay off, we're gonna make $400 and we're gonna lose $100 when it doesn't. So that's again, the decision we have to make. Anyway, that's reverse iron condor, guys. Use when we think the market's gonna move outside of range, we're gonna expire outside of range. And also, uh, we just don't know the direction. We just think it's gonna move either higher or lower and we've got a narrow range we wanna do it in or a wide range, it depends on how much you wanna pay for the deal. Uh, limited risk, uh, we're limited upside. That's the reverse iron condor.
Take care, whatever you're doing. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.